I've forgotten. Oh, yes. Welcome to another Lightning Strikes Twice. I am Casey Rossroot. I'm definitely not tired. Um, and uh, we we do two topics, five minutes apiece. And uh, yeah, so take it away, Mr. Eric. Okay, well, give me just a second here. Got to gotta get my mental lubricant in. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess... I, I, th this doesn't really have a classification. Maybe tomfoolery, I suppose, or something. Maybe philosophy. Um, oh, are Vulcans actually stoic and logical, or are they simply repressing their emotions? Uh, hmm. I would say the latter. Uh, we we do. Yeah. I mean, in the show, we've seen evidence of that, where where they struggle with the, all these pent up emotions that like uh um uh what's his name uh S sark right yeah one episode where he was kind of losing his mind due to the disease and stuff like well I, I thought it was funny that they, they consider it a, a disease to like experience emotion basically yeah. in fact that's <laughs> probably one of the things that, that like star trek does really well is kind of talking about certain things in a way that seems like something else but conveys a really important point in in kind of a, a clever way uh, or maybe mm -hmm. a disguised way right yeah like uh the 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 stoic thing uh, i mean so vulcans are like kind of arrogant about their their particular like chosen way of being and um uh I, I don't know, like, there, there is, like, a hoity-toityness to, to um, that, that's almost inherent with, you know, like, going strictly with logic or strictly with, you know, a stoic attitude. But um, I, I, I think, I think in the case of Vulcans, they aren't, they aren't doing it specifically for, uh, necessarily for personal betterment just more like i think it adapted as a cultural thing and yeah, they just do it because right. they're supposed to it's you're yeah. expected to be that way yeah. yeah so it's like rather than it being a, a choice that you make because you say oh hey you know this is an interesting philosophy i'm going to explore it no you're you're expected as a vulcan to fall in line so to speak mm -hmm. and as such you, yeah you have all these people who would otherwise not go down that path um, essentially being forced to do it yeah which it's uh, effectively like their their religion yeah yeah well it kind of is yeah and i mean they they I, which yeah, is so really I, funny actually when you think about it it is yeah because they're <laughs> supposed to be so logical and stuff yeah, yeah. it's kind of funny but it, no actually there are parallels because they 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 think logic has an answer for everything. Like, you know, the Bible or God has an answer for everything. And yeah. Sometimes it's just not the case, you know? Mm. Um, sometimes which is where uh, emotions are the answer. Or, yeah. Which you know. is where Spock sort of fills that gap, I guess. Um, being ha human, having Vulcan and human influences. Um, mm. Like he, he does. Although, you know, in the in, in show and movies and stuff, well, other than the, the new Trek, um, he generally doesn't get super emotional, but you can definitely see that he is like allowing emotion to sort of be present within himself. Um, even though like, and I think that's kind of a really good blend. In fact, like yeah. true stoicism allows for that. That's expected. You, you, you have emotion, you experience it and all that, but, you deal with it differently. And, and that's where I think the, the human and Vulcan philosophy is sort of converge in like a really good way. And, and you know, obviously Vulcans aren't, well, as far as we know, Vulcans aren't real. Um, they're just fictional, <laughs> but it, it, it's kind of like the, the Jedi in uh, star Wars that like, Hey, that's an interesting philosophy that we can adopt without there actually being Vulcans or Jedi out there. Um, I mean, there's there's a whole group of people who follow the Jedi way as a way of life, which I find to be super fascinating. Huh. 
Uh, there's probably also people doing the Vulcan thing. Well, there's <laughs> certainly people doing the Klingon thing, too. In fact, I think a family raised their kid only speaking Klingon. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting because, I mean, that's one of the more developed uh, fictional languages. Um, and so, yeah, they, they raised a kid where, where it's only speaking Klingon. Um, <laughs> I guess kind of as an experiment. I don't rem remember the outcome of that, like if that was a positive or negative outcome. Um, but uh, the child probably ended up with CPS, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a language. It's a functional language. You can have conversations in Klingon totally fine. Well, I think, isn't there that Star Trek University somewhere in the Midwest? Oh, yeah. Um, I think they probably have. Oh, that's time. Classes. Yeah. that's interesting yeah. though Klingon classes yeah <laughs> oh man yeah okay so now your turn um it's kind of a toss up here so last minute I'm going to make a decision uh well this is this is kind of in the news from time to time sort of relevant uh what are your overall feelings on age gaps in relationships, particularly uh, people being critical of celebrities and who they choose to date? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's an easy one. It It's nonsense. Like, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter, honestly, mm -hmm. as long as it's voluntary. Right. Um, right. I, it doesn't it, age difference isn't isn't really an issue now. It, there can be complications, obviously, with with um, somebody who, say, is 20 or 30 years older than another person where they ha they grew up in a different time and, and sort of yeah. see the world differently and have different amounts of experience. I mean, somebody who has an enormous amount of, of experience coupled with somebody who has limited experience, that could potentially cause issues. But by the same token, it could also be really beneficial and that you have someone if you're the inexperienced person, you have somebody to kind of lean on who's like been there dozens of times before. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, that you're going to run into issues in any relationship. Like, like mm -hmm. you could say the same of me marrying a German. Yeah. No, to you're, Germany. you're absolutely. Like, yeah. like there, that's actually arguably far more complicated uh, than, yes. than two different generations like mm -hmm. dating each other you know like and uh I, yeah i i don't see any point in like calling people creepy or weird or perverts or pedophiles or cradle no. robbers or all this you, you all love this. who you love and, and i mean as long as again as long as it's voluntary and everybody's right. like happy i guess who cares well and point we should also point out that it it's kind of a double standard because it's it's usually only creepy when the guy is the older one if yes the girl is the older one it's oh what an empowered woman you know like <laughs> it, yeah. isn't, didn't a family guy do do a, a bit about that oh probably where, where it was like you know that like in the span of a short period of time that they, they were really criticizing the guy with the younger girl and then as soon as <laughs> it was like the the younger guy with the older girl like oh yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> like yeah you're right it is a double standard it should apply across the board it should be fine and, mm -hmm. you know and I'm, it's like i think one of the it's a cultural thing it's a it's a way that people have been conditioned to perceive things um and they automatically well what, what who's the well, there was a teacher um who hooked up with a student uh who was a lot younger than her and Let, I think maternal she, yeah, yeah, she went to jail uh, for it, but they're still together today. Like, it turned out all right. Like, you yeah. know. Wait, didn't one of them die? Ooh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't I, been following that. I seem to remember something about that. But yeah, I mean, like, they did stay together for a long time. Yeah. Um, a friend of ours ran into them at a bar and talked with them, and they were super cool. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, like... Just you know, leave people alone. <laughs> so, exactly. Like what you these, these poor celebrities, like everything they do gets put put in under such scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And you know, like 
you don't have all the details, you know, exactly. like, you don't know how they met, how they, you know, how the relationship formed over time. I, I can't even remember what gave me the idea for this. There was some, some celebrity, I think he was maybe a, a coach. Oh yeah. Yeah. This Bill Belichick or whatever, the Patriots coach is dating uh he's like 72 and he's dating a 24 year old former cheerleader for the patriots <laughs> and of course people are like oh grooming blah 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 and it's like well okay adult grooming is a thing but this is not what it is <laughs> no no uh it's well very uh, different nobody seemed to complain about hugh hefner <laughs> <laughs> you know they were like oh wow that's cool what a lucky guy <laughs> <laughs> what a guy <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's like, yeah, just live your life um, and don't be critical of other people who, who do things differently because everybody does things differently. And yeah, like you said, it, it, and why pick on celebrities? I would, I would hate to be a celebrity. Oh my God, like paparazzi and people being all, you're in the spotlight all the time. It's like, can I just go to the damn grocery store, please? You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we did. I think we did a whole episode on that once, like this whole uh, uh, reverence of celebrities and how it kind of doesn't make any sense. And um, yeah, celebrities and politicians alike—they're just people, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it's weird. That's, uh, that's time. <laughs> and now you won't know what was weird <laughs> <laughs> unless we do a follow-up. So, if you want us to do a follow-up. Leave uh, comments down there in the comment section, and definitely like and subscribe and share too. That that would help. The yeah, but don't, don't subscribe to the channel if you're like 24, because you know we're in our 40s and <laughs> we don't want people to think we're creeps. Yep, yep, and, and <laughs> certainly don't if you're like 16 or something. Then you know, yeah, <laughs> be monetized <laughs> <laughs> uh, for subscribing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my uh, god, they're grooming girls to subscribe to their channel. <laughs> uh, well, it's been a, a pretty good one. So thanks for watching and tune in for next week where we're going to have some other interesting topics, I'm sure. <laughs>